Hi everybody. I'd like to share with you today a reflection and prayer prompted by some recent events and it includes some scriptural verses about anger and about self-control but it also touches on things like peace and the importance of forgiveness. So let me read this to you. People get angry and frustrated and then often say or do foolish, destructive things. <laughs> I get angry with those people and maybe I say or do something that I shouldn't. And then you get angry at me and say something you later regret. Anger can be a dangerous thing. <laughs> it's true we can all feel cross at times. There's plenty of reason. But we have to be careful how we handle it. Listen to some advice from Paul the Apostle writing in the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So it would seem that holding on to and nursing our feelings of hurt and indignation overnight to the next day and the next and perhaps for weeks, months, even years, opens the door to the demon of bitterness and the host of unpleasant things that accompany it. We, perhaps we raise our voice, we shake our fist, we utter curses, we say bad things against those we think are to blame. And the next thing, property is burning. Somebody's son or daughter is lying injured in hospital or even dead in the street. Better surely, with God's help, to do as Jesus teaches and forgive those who anger us, as we hope to be forgiven our offences against heaven. Release the resentment. Let it go. Perhaps take opportunity to talk about the difference with civility and respect. There's an opportunity to grow in understanding. And we can always surely seek some common good. Challenging, yes, but much better than corrosive anger and hatred. This week, the news reported violent disturbance on the streets of my hometown. Now, while it didn't make the headlines, I read of a church in the same city on the very same day whose members filled a table in their gateway with free food for anyone from anywhere who might be facing financial difficulty. That reminds me of another verse written by the Apostle Paul in Romans 5, that where sin increased, grace increased all the more. For now in this world, until our Lord returns, there will always be darkness, but there is also light. And so we have a choice. Which will we choose to nurture and welcome in our hearts? Bitterness or grace? I think we can all feel a, a tension pulled more than one way in these things. And feeling a little bit of that tension, I wrote the following prayer. Lord, things aren't right and we're frustrated. Our anger tempts us to speak rashly, too easily blaming and condemning others for everything. The tension boils, prompting violence and destruction. We perhaps surrender to the lying voices of hatred and anarchy. O oh Lord, save us. Deliver us from the madness of conflict. Lord, send your angels to patrol our streets tonight.
protecting innocent and vulnerable, restraining those who are turning to wickedness. May your spirit teach us wisdom, a godly respect, an awakened conscience. Sow in our hearts again the seeds of humility and service and peace. O oh Lord, we confess our selfish indulgence and idols of this world that have abandoned our generation to despair. Forgive us. Turn our hearts with zeal once more to Christ. Jesus, Prince of Peace, retake command in our hearts and lead us in paths of righteousness and overcoming love for your name's sake, Jesus. And this week we also remember in our prayers Queen Elizabeth and the royal family in their loss. And we pray, Lord, that they would turn to your word and to Jesus and find comfort and wisdom. Bringing all our prayers today through our Master and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you.